Okay, so like I just woke up, right? Like went, did my whole morning process, just woke up. As soon as I woke up, because I, I jumped up and I got on Twitter and I was like, good morning, Rob Core. Like, and then, then like as I was typing that, I remember the Carol Danvers trailer dropped. And I was like, holy shit, do the Captain Marvel trailer. So I was like, okay, like I'm so ready for this thing. So so I get like, I, I jump onto YouTube and I start checking YouTube and I don't see anything. All I see are just those, those crappy fan-made trailers where people try to trick people. And so like, I'm, I'm like, okay, because it says like nine months ago. And I'm like, all right, so that shit's false. And so I'm, I'm, I'm just like sitting there waiting. So I go through my whole morning process and then I jump on YouTube again and it says like uploaded nine minutes ago, the Captain Marvel trailer. And I was like, yes. So like I, I play that shit. Dude, that trailer though. Oh my God, dude, 1990s nostalgia. Nick Fury's got both eyes. Coulson's got like a, like, like a faux hawk kind of, you know, I'm just like, I'm like, man, like dude, Coulson, man, like you're looking a little too old for that look, but I understand they're trying to make you look young, but come on, man, this ain't Hollywood. You know, you gotta, you gotta look like your age. All right, you don't wanna end up looking like Joan Rivers where you just, you just, you, know, you just kinda look, you kinda look like somebody like beats you in the face with putty. Like, you don't, you don't, you don't wanna look like that. So, so I'm, I'm looking, I'm, I'm watching this whole thing and then like, like it looks cool. Like it's kinda what I expected in terms of the scenes and stuff like that. But like, it looks like two big things are happening here. One, we're getting Carol Danvers binary. Shit. And then we're getting, then we're getting like secret invasion. Man, dude, okay. Man, 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 I'm gonna tell you something. Okay, so, so, I don't know which one to start with first because they're both badass. Okay, let's start with binary. So, here was the deal. Back in the 1970s, Marvel had a whole bunch of anthology books. And the reason why was because in the 1960s, they gave us like Spider-Man and Thor and the Avengers and Captain America came back and Iron Man, Incredible Hulk, so on. But the X-Men was the first big flop of Marvel in the 1960s, in the, in the mid to late 1960s. Like X, a lot of people don't know that. X-Men sucked. Like, like people did not like the X-Men the way that Stan Lee and Jack Kirby wrote them. So after that, Marvel was like, okay, so maybe we've run our course in terms of just like throwing out a whole bunch of solo books. Maybe we should be more concerned and how we publish our books. And so they started go, they, they did what DC used to do back in the late 1930s and the early 1940s, and they started releasing anthology books. Now, what are anthology books? Anthology books are basically um, a comic book where you have a whole bunch of stories in that book. And so that's when Marvel started releasing things like Marvel Presents and Marvel Premiere and Marvel Superheroes and so on and so forth. Now, in Marvel Comics at the time, you had a character named Marvell. It was M A R M A R dash V E L L. I'm pretty sure it was. And then there's like there's like Genus Vell and so on and so forth, which I really really hope we get Philavell in the Marvel Cinematic Universe one day. <sighs> dude, my dude, Philavell as Quasar was amazing. Anyway, um, so so so, Marvell at the time was a Kree soldier who was sent to Earth, I think for the purpose of deciding whether or not it could be captured or something like that. And then like met the Earth superheroes and then became a good guy and turned against the Kree army. And so that led to a conflict, like a bunch of conflicts between himself and his, his general enemy named uh, yon Rog. Now eventually that comes to a head when yon Rog shows up on Earth at Cape Canaveral or Cape Citadel. I can never remember which one because one of them was the place that Magneto attacked which I want to say was Cape Citadel. It was a place Magneto attacked in his first encounter with the X-Men. And the other one is where Carol Danvers was stationed at as an Air Force pilot. I want to say she was in Cape Canaveral and Magneto attacked Cape Citadel. But regardless of the case, uh, Carol Danvers is enamored by Captain Marvel. She's watching, you know, by, by Marvel. She's watching all this stuff unfold and she's exposed to the psych magnetron, which is basically a wishing machine. And she's like, I wish I had, I, I wish I was equal to Marvell, more or less is what happens. And Psych Magnetron blends her human physiology with Kree physiology, and she goes forward as Miss Marvel. And she was drawn to be like a very luscious looking character to attract boys. But she was also really empowering for a lot of young girls. Now, this goes for like the whole of the 1970s, right? And, and as time progresses, like, the X-Men just keep getting more and more popular. And so it's kind of like, okay, like what, like what do we do? Like how can we make our character interesting? Because interest in her just began to drop off for a variety of reasons. Because people like the X-Men stories because her stories were more like adventurous and they were more, you know, getting out there and, and you know, deal, dealing with a lot more tangible real world things like feminism. But people wanted to see the X-Men, like, like Chris Claremont's style of storytelling across the entire Marvel landscape, which he had so many writers. He had like Roy Thomas and he had all these different guys who were writing different stories. And so Carol Danvers began to drop off an interest. So they said, okay, well, how do we make her interesting? Well, then throw her onto the X-Men, like throw her onto the X-Men team. And so what happens is Chris Claremont takes over because he wrote the Captain, he wrote the Miss Marvel line of comics 
at the tail end and then took her and threw her on the X-Men team. And eventually he writes a story where she's kidnapped by, a, by an alien race called the Brood, which doesn't really matter. But what the Brood do is they modify her genes so she can tap into the power of a white dwarf star. What does that mean? It means that she can do whatever she wants to do because Chris Claremont says the story calls for it. And so basically she, she becomes a new character named Binary. As Binary, she is broken. Like, dude, she's, she's, she's OP as hell. She can fly through space without oxygen. She has cosmic awareness. She can channel cosmic energies. I mean, she could do like all, all this, all, just all this crazy shit. She has like minor reality manipulation. It's, it's crazy, like all the powers that she has. She just becomes like super broken. And so from there, Chris Claremont was like, okay, so let's take the next step. Let's like merge her with Rogue. So you get like Avengers, uh, you, no, you don't. You get, yeah, Avengers, no, no, X-Men. Avengers Annual Number 10 or X-Men Annual Number 10? I think it was Avengers Annual Number 10. Yeah, because Avengers 200 is the one where a guy gives birth to himself through Carol Danvers. Don't ask. So, 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 anyway, so Rogue shows up. Like, it's, dude, oh, dude, this is the most beast shit ever. Rogue shows, dude, man, let me tell you something. Rogue meets, meets Mystique, and Mystique's like, I'm your mom. And Rogue's like, whatever. So Mystique's like, go to the Avengers Mansion and, like, steal the Hammer of Thor or some shit like that. And she does. Dude, she rolls into, dude, Rogue rolls into Avengers Mansion and just crushes everyone and then like takes like touches thor and then becomes worthy and takes his hammer and just like goes forward as like rogue thor dude it's the most beast shit ever but anyway she ends up grabbing carol danvers and she latches onto carol danvers for too long and then starts to absorb part of carol danvers consciousness and that leads to a whole story arc with rogue where she's fine she's like constantly fighting herself fighting like the miss marvel pers uh, persona inside of her own mind but like Carol Danvers eventually like went back to being normal and then lost her, you know, like she lost her binary connection or whatever it is. And then just kind of like, you know, went forward as her, as her character. If you guys are interested in Carol Danvers, uh, go read the Kelly Sue DeConnick run of, of Captain Marvel. Because that's when she actually becomes Captain Marvel. Up to that point, she was always Miss Marvel or Carol Danvers. And so like she adopts the Captain Marvel moniker going forward from there. You don't really need to know anything before that. You can just pick up with Kelly Sue DeConnick's run. But, uh, but it's, 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 it's like the best run of her character ever. Do not read Civil War II because then you'll hate her. So, so like just read Kelly Sudicotic's run and then just go forward from there. Now, having said that, Secret Invasion is what I'm the most interested about. That, that's what I'm the most interested in because Secret Invasion was absolutely, it was, it was, dude, Secret Invasion was so cool. So in the Secret Invasion storyline, uh, that takes place after the first Civil War, right? But like the, the things that led to it take place long before the first Civil War. So in Marvel Comics, you have a secret group called the Illuminati. So you, so it's basically Black Panther, Name of the Submariner. Um, it was Charles Xavier, then became Captain America during the events of, uh, no, no, it wasn't. It was, no, Captain America was, God, I can never remember because Jonathan Hickman changed that. Captain America, I think, was originally part of the Illuminati and then, no, 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 he was not. It was Charles Xavier who was originally part of it. They brought Captain America in during the incursions, during the collapse of the multiverse. And then, like, all the Illuminati agree they would have to start destroying planets. And Captain America said, no, that's not okay. So Doctor Strange wiped his mind and then sent him forward. And then eventually he learns the truth about what's going on. It was one of the coolest things ever. Like, like, like Tony Stark is like, he's like, I'm sorry, Steve. And he says, he says, like, He's like, Stephen, do it. And, and Steve's like, what? And the Stephen Strange, like, Dr. Strange is just, or like, Steve Rogers is like, what, what are you talking about? And Dr. Strange is like, I'm sorry, like, I'm sorry, Steve. And then just wipes his mind. And so he's just, he's just laying there, totally unaware of anything that was going on. The coolest thing ever. It was, it was, dude, Tony Stark was such a dick. And so, so anyway, um, so, so there was a point where the Illuminati, so it's like, it's like Black Panther. It's, um, well, they met in Wakanda. Black Panther didn't want to be part of it originally, uh, but he ended up joining it anyway during the incursions. But you had the, you had, you had Charles Xavier, you had Professor X, you had, um, Tony Stark, Iron Man, you had Doctor Strange, you had, uh, name of the Submariner. Anyway, the idea was they were, they were going to operate behind the scenes and they were going to basically make sure that they always had all their information together and Reed Richards of the Fantastic Four. They were always going to make sure that they shared information for any one particular event. So the whole planet would always be safe. And so what they do is they travel to the scroll home world of Skrullos and they're like, because, because what you had was a Kree scroll war. It was a war between the Kree and the scrolls that almost destroyed earth. And so they travel to the Skrull homeworld and they're like, look, do not bring your shit to this world. Like, do not bring your problems here. All right, like, stay there. Like, you stay there, you do your thing, do not bring your problems here. And so the Skrulls are just like, but like, who the hell do you think you are though? And so like, they kidnap the Illuminati, right? And they just, they, they start analyzing their genes, you know, and all that kind of good stuff. And then like, the, like the, the Illuminati have no idea that happens. They just wake up and they're like, well, we got to get out of here. We got to escape. And they successfully escape and they leave. All right, this fast forward some time. 
when Galactus shows up and destroys the, the scroll homeworld, like absorbs the, the, you know, the life energy of the scroll homeworld to sustain himself. And so the scrolls flee because they're like, okay, well now it's manifest destiny. We have to go to earth. So like, we're, we're going to, we're going to take over the planet earth. So they start basically start replacing earth superheroes with scroll replicants. And eventually like they're, this, this, this is discovered in two ways. The first person to discover it is Nick Fury. When he realizes there's a, a human woman that he's talking to that he's kind of banging for a little bit, that's a scroll. And so he's, he's underground at the time. This is, this is old school white Nick Fury. It's not Samuel Jackson Nick Fury. So Nick Fury realizes what's going on and he goes underground. Then he assembles the secret warriors. So he brings in like Daisy Johnson, uh, Quake, and like all these other, all these other characters. And then, um, and then it is Elektra. It's the character, it's the character of Elektra who somebody, I can't remember who it is. Somebody realizes, maybe it's Wolverine. Somebody realizes Elektra is a scroll. And so that's when the superheroes begin to realize that, like, not all the superheroes are actually superheroes. And so finally, like, the events of Secret Invasion come to a head, and it's like all the actual superheroes meet their, their superhero replicants from the scrolls. This is a massive, huge battle. Um, Deadpool's involved, because, of course, it's Deadpool. And, like, Deadpool, Deadpool technically saves the day and sends the information back to Earth on how to defeat the scrolls. And then Norman Osborn, and the Green Goblin, intercepts it. And then Norman Osborn is just like, yeah, so, like, hey, guys, I know how to beat the scrolls. Well, at this time, Civil War's done, right? Like, the Civil War conflict is done. Uh, the Superhuman Registration Act went through, the bad guys won, and Tony Stark is director of S.H.I.E.L.D. And so when that happens, when Norman Osborn shows up and says, hey, I know how to beat the scrolls," and then defeats them all, then, like, the government looks to Tony Stark and says, how could you not have known this happened? Like, how could you not know that such a huge percentage of the Earth's population were scroll replicants? So they're like, you're a terrible leader of, of S.H.I.E.L.D. So they kick him out, right? Tony Stark gets kicked out as director of S.H.I.E.L.D., and Norman Osborn gets stepped in. Like, like or they, they say, okay, Norman Osborn, because for whatever reason you can trust the Green Goblin, so like Norman Osborn, you're the new director of S.H.I.E.L.D. What does Norman Osborn do? Dismantles it. <laughs> he shuts it down. He's like, S.H.I.E.L.D. is now done. Instead, I'm going to create Hammer. And in place of Hammer, like, like with Hammer, I'm going to do what bad guys do, which is try to conquer the world. This leads into a whole publication house called Dark Reign. And dude, it's, it's like the coolest thing ever. The X-Men leave Westchester in New York and they, they go to Utopia off the coast of San Francisco. And like all the superheroes go underground. Like everybody's part of the Secret Avengers now. Like they're all part of Captain America's Secret Avengers team. And then like, like, like uh, Norman Osborn takes all the villains and turns them into the superheroes. So like Dakin, the son of Wolverine, becomes the new Wolverine. And like uh, there's one character, I can't remember who it is who becomes the new, no, he becomes a new Iron Man. He becomes Iron Patriot. Um, Ares, the God of War, replaces Thor, I think it is. Or, or, and then, like, Sentry joins his team. Um, you have, God, who else is it? Uh, Bullseye replaces Daredevil. Like, it's, it's, it's really cool in terms of, like, how this whole thing unfolds. But that goes on a dark rain, which is a whole, a whole different discussion. But it looks like it's going to be badass. Like, this movie looks like it's setting the stage for Secret Invasion, which I really want to see. So, like, I'm, I am, God, dude, that trailer... That, tra that trailer looks so beast. And dude, can we all just agree, Brie Larson looks amazing as Carol Danvers. Damn, Brie Larson. Like, I, had, I, I didn't know she would look that great. She looks amazing as Carol Danvers. Like, like she's getting a modern-day costume, which that makes sense. I mean, you know, like, I, I didn't understand why people got pissed off about why her costume, like, like, in the pictures, wasn't, like, the one that you see now. That's like getting angry because they show you, like, the Iron Man suit Mark One instead of, like, the Mark Two or the Mark Three or whatever. It's like, well, of course, it's the first suit she was wearing. That's, I mean, like... Like yeah, did you think like did you, did you think like she was she was just gonna like have the Captain Marvel suit all of a sudden? It took her like forty years of Marvel Comics to get that thing. But anyway, so so yeah, I'm I'm really excited. Like I'm 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 very very excited, and I'm 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 very very hyped. I think the movie's gonna be badass. But let me know what you guys think down in the comment section. Let me know what you guys think because it looks like it's gonna it looks like it's gonna be sweet. It looks like it's gonna be be pretty awesome. Um. But yeah, if Carol Danvers has the power of binary, while I wouldn't say she's as powerful as Thanos with the Infinity Gauntlet, I'd say she's pretty damn close to that version. Now, if we're talking about Thanos with the Infinity Gauntlet in Marvel Comics, no, no, not a chance. It would take someone like the Molecule Man. Like, it would take them, if it was, it was, if it was Thanos with the, with the power of the Infinity Gauntlet from the comics, if they had that version in the Marvel Cinematic Universe, oh, it would take somebody like, like, um... Yeah, it would take somebody like the Molecule Man, Owen Reese, to stop him. Like, like he would, and and then like, yeah, if it was like pre-retcon, like if it was 
If it was Owen Reese the way he originally was, yeah, he would just be like, and you're done now. Like, that would, that would be it. Like, it would be like a wave of his hand. And it's like, and now you're finished, Thanos. So I'm going to go home. Like, that. Dude, that's, see, people don't understand how powerful some of the people in Marvel Comics are. Dude, Molecule Man was insane. That's, that's exactly how that would have gone down. If it was like 1987 Molecule Man, yeah, he would have walked in. Like, Thanos would have been like, oh, I have the Infinity Gauntlet. I have absolute power. And Molecule Man's like, whatever, man. Like, I could beat the hell out of you and be home in time for Corn Flakes. And just like, like, wave his hand. And then, like, Thanos is like, what happened? And Molecule Man's like, I took your power away. So, like, I'm going to go home now. And uh, everybody have a good day. And, and let me know if you guys need anything. Peace. Like, <laughs> it would be funny. Anyway, guys, we're going to bring this video to an end. Uh, if you guys are new here to Comics Explain, make sure you guys hit the sub button to become part of the Rob Corps. If you guys enjoy this video, make sure you drop a like. I apologize for my morning look. And I will catch you all later. Peace. <laughs>